Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor presented by Profotech Solutions Team. I am Sanjay. We are learning Code Writer Framework Beginner Tutorial, and this is Part 8. Inside this video session, guys, we will see that how can we insert data inside database table using raw query in Code Igniter. And also, guys, if you are a beginner to this channel, then please don't forget to subscribe and keep watching our previous video sessions to get the clear concept about Code Igniter Framework Tutorial. In our previous part guys, we had discussed about the concept of mod models. So basically if you back to editor, in our last video session simply we have defined a model something called site underscore model dot php and we have successfully loaded this model inside this controller called site dot php using two alternative ways. And also we have used that this is the method that we have made and finally we have used this method inside the controller. So how can we define model, how can we load model inside controllers as well as how can we use the models method in controller we had seen so far in our previous video session. But basically so far we haven't connected our model with the database. So inside this video I am going to connect with the database table and also we are going to insert some data. So back to our database. So this is the database that we have made and inside this database I am going to create a table something called TBL users and it basically contains four columns. So click on go. Let's say that ID, name, email and phone number. So these are the columns that we have specified inside TBL users. It should be varchar. So let's say data type should be varchar. Email also should be varchar and phone number also should be varchar. It's length something about 50 characters. Let's say 50 and it has maximum something called 15 characters. It's called here. We are going to make our ID as auto increment ID means the primary key. Click on that and I'm going to select as the index equal to primary key and all the columns rest columns actually will take some of the null values. So I'm going to click on OK, so scroll down and save button. Successfully we have created our table called TBL users. So if I click on database, this is the table. If I click on the table, click on the structure, this is our structure. So back to editor. Now firstly, we have to set our database inside this project. So far we haven't made any database connection to this project. So how can we achieve that? So inside config folder, inside this folder we have a file something called database.php. So clicking on this file, scroll down. Now as we can see that there are multiple parameters we have to set to make our database connection. So remember, coordinator does not support only for the PHP MyAdmin, only for the MySQL. It will connect with the PostgreSQL and many more database according to your choice. So right now this application is connected with MySQLi. So I am going to pass hostname is localhost. Let's say username equal to root. Password is root and the database that we have made something learn coordinator. So if I copy this name, go to editor and I am going to pasting it here. So we have successfully made our database connection. After that, if we want to use the database connections to our model files, then we have to load a library inside autoload.php, something called database. So to use that, just go inside config folder. Here is a file, something called autoload.php. This file we had discussed that this file basically used to load all the necessary settings automatically when the application initializes. So inside libraries, we are going to use called database. So if I save this file, now we have successfully loaded our database connection. So go to routes.php. Let's make a route something called route. Inside this routes, let's say site, and I'm going to call something called insert data. After calling this route, it will insert some data inside of table. So let's say that it will use called site, and let's insert data into table. This is our method name. So if I save this file, copy this method name, go to site.php and I'm going to scroll here and let's make a method and this method basically insert data into let's say db table. So let's say function method name 
and inside this function name firstly we are going to load our site model so let's say this site model and inside site model we will make a method that might have actually insert data inside table so let's say insert data instead of that if I say let's say insert table data this is the method that we have to make now inside this method we are going to pass some value so before passing value if I go site model and let's define that let's say function function name and inside this function basically we have to insert some data so this DB and we have the method called insert so let me explain about this DB in a bit so if I go here site.php I'm going to pass some data so let's say data it should be an array inside this array I'm going to pass called name and let's say that Sanjay and email something dummy value and finally we have the column remember if you go to have a stable now we have the column something called phone number so if I copy this column name pasting it here and it has something let's say one two three four this is the dummy value and finally we're going to pass this data inside our method so after getting all these data back to our site model now we are receiving some data okay so inside insert method we have to pass the two parameters firstly the table name so we are going to insert our table something called tbl users what we have made here now inside the second parameter we have to pass our data which is an array format either we can pass directly an array inside this array we can put our name something email and something phone number but remember we are passing these values inside this data so all these things we have to get rid of that and let's say data variable so if I save all these files and if I echo the result of insertion so let's echo save this file back to routes.php and if I copy this route name back to browser and let's say that here index.php and site instead of that this is our route we are going to call something called site insert data if I press enter it means that data has been inserted so back to table now as we can see that inside TVL users we have one row and something what the details we have sent from our query so this is how we have inserted back to editor now go to our model so inside this model we haven't used so far about the raw queries these are called active records so we we will discuss about active records in more detail in our upcoming videos so if I make comment of this line and we are going to insert some data with our raw query so let's say that db this db and let's say query inside this query we have to write our MySQL query so let's say insert into tbl underscore users here we have to pass the column name so something name email and we have called phone number and finally we have to pass our values so let's say values so firstly let's say that sample it's the name and email address something w values so sample at gmail.com and finally we have to pass the phone number so let's say that phone number it is also a dummy value something that so if I save this file and before saving that if I return this value to our controller and finally echo that so if I save this file back here reload this page now as we can see that the one has been returned it means that one row has been inserted inside this table so if I click on refresh now as we can see that sample sample at gmail.com and this is the phone number what we have inserted from our raw query so this is how how can we execute our query from model so inside this video we had discussed about all the ways to insert either by using active records or by using our raw query we have seen 
So what is the basic difference between raw query insertion and the active record insertion? We will see in our upcoming videos. So what will happen if we go inside the autoload.php and remove this database connection? So if I save this file, back here, reload this page, now we have some error. Error is that undefined property, site, scope resolution operator and this is DB. Back to editor, as we know that we have used something called this DB, we are calling an instance. What does it mean? It means that this is an object and this object has been created by loading our database library file. So it is giving error. So how can we basically remove that error? Either we can pass, let's say database here. So if we go here, reload this space, error has gone and the record has been inserted. But remember, if I again remove it, remove it from here, it will give error. But we have also another option to use this database library. How can we use that? Go to site model and before here, let's say that public function or let's say simply public function, we are going to make our constructor function. Inside this constructor function, we are going to load our database. So this load and simply say database. So instead of loading this library, if we load this database here, so we can use that, that. So if I save this file, back here, reload this page. Now as we can see that record has been inserted. So for now, we have three records. So if we refresh, as we have four records. So successfully guys, inside this video, we had discussed about how can we load models and also with the database connections, we had inserted some data inside our table. So in our next video session guys, we will discuss that what is the basic difference between active record insertion as well as raw query insertion. So inside this video, if you have any query inside this video session guys, then please drop your comment. I will give my reply as soon as possible. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day.